How's it going guys, I'm Vivi and welcome back to some Ratchet & Clank. As you may all know, there was a Ratchet & Clank comic series, it's pretty short. We're talking about 6 volumes, right? These got released from September 2010 to February 2011. On July 5th, 2011, we got a compilation of those, which is very rare to find these days. It pretty much got discontinued, and if you want to buy it off Amazon or eBay, it's very expensive. Well, for the actual physical copy. Now since we're talking about comic books, there's a little extra something I I discovered very recently. I absolutely had no idea about this. I just stumbled upon it very recently. Back in 2005, there was an online webcomic released by Insomniac Games called The Adventures of Captain Starshield. It was released in six episodes. Each episode had one page, it's very short, and it kind of gave us a little background about Captain Starshield. Now due to Insomniac Games' website updates, it got taken down, but on Wikia they were given the permission to post it on there, which is pretty great. Okay, so we know that this short web series got released by Insomniac Games, but who were the ones who worked on it, to be a bit more precise? We're talking about Greg Baldwin and David Girton. These two are the principal artists of the franchise. They designed a bunch of characters and you can find their concepts and everything on their official website called Creature Box. These two actually founded the website. The link will be in the description. So once they were done designing for Deadlocked, they were given the opportunity to come up with a short, well very short, comic series. Okay, so since this is a very short comic we're talking about, is there much going on? Well, there are two planets mentioned. We have Kalzon from the Solana Galaxy and Fractus from the Kavorian Galaxy, which we've never heard about. It'd be pretty sweet to have these new galaxies we've never heard of in future sequels. The Kavorian Galaxy, hmm. Now anything else in this very short comic? Well, the Kragmites were mentioned. Starshield had found some on Fractus. And talking about the Kragmites, what are they even doing on planet Fractus, weren't they sent on the Dying Star X249 via the Dimensionator? Well yeah, during the Great War, the Lombaxes were the ones who sent the Kragmites to that dimension. If so, how can we explain their existence on planet Fractus? Well, there's one thing I thought of, maybe the Kragmites, they have different species. The ones that were sent to this other dimension, they were different. I guess we can say that, or realistically, maybe Insomniac Games had no idea what to do with the Kragmites. I mean, this comic series takes place before Tools of Destruction. This kind of reminds me of the whole situation with Angela being a Lombax without a tail. Back in Going Commando, I don't think the team had thought of the idea of an extra Lombax. Maybe they forgot to add the tail, I don't know what, but let's not get into that. Now guys, just for a fact. According to the Ratchet & Clank timeline, which you can find on Wiki, the adventures of Captain Starshield perhaps took place during 5357. Now if we go with what was mentioned on the radio in A Crack in Time regarding Angela Cross's disappearance, then these events with Starshield took place 3 years prior to A Crack in Time. So in A Crack in Time, we're talking about 5360. Anyways, according to Starshield, where you find Kragmites, you find a Cantor. I think that's how you pronounce it. We've never heard of this creature before. Just by looking at it, it's lacking eyes and it lives underground. Now before he crash landed on planet Fractus, he saved planet Kalzon from a huge ship which was controlled by Baron Masseter, another character which we've never heard of before. Well, until you guys watched this video. Maybe some of you knew about this already. Once he was done with saving planet Kalzon, he crash landed on planet Fractus and took care of the Cantor. Later on, he received a distress signal from the Shadow Sector, which is apparently located on the outer rim of the solar Solana Galaxy. That place has no laws whatsoever, a lot of freedom, and it's pretty much a dead area. Oh, and by the way, the Shadow Sector was the perfect place for Gleeman Vox to hold a bunch of illegal combats, aka Dread Zone. For those of you who played Deadlocked, the contestants were pretty much forced to join. They were all forced against their will. As for Captain Starshield, he was found and he was basically forced to join Dread Zone. He was the best before Ace Hardlight. He actually had reached the Vindicator rank. Now at one point at Dread Zone, unfortunately, the contestants have to battle each other to death. What happened is Ace Hardlight killed Captain Starshield. That was the last of him. He got vaporized, just like that. It's sad to think this Captain Starshield guy, he was a hero. To get killed, just like that. After all the enemies you've encountered. After all the planets you saved. It's just sad for this character. Now of course the same thing can be said for the other contestants. But anyways, how are we so sure that this 
this star shield guy saved a bunch of planets. How are we so sure that he was considered a hero back then? One, we have the comic he saved a planet, and two, there's a web archive which apparently has a description of Captain Starshield's background. Here it is, Juanita. We get the point, Dallas, so where did Captain Starshield come from? Well, apparently he made quite a name for himself before he joined our humble little program. He saved the Solana galaxy from a robot ghost pirate invasion back in Galactic Date G216918. He saved the Tyrolean galaxy on two separate occasions from ravenous space locusts. He saved the Bogon galaxy back in G214173 when it was being terrorized by a pan-galactic amoeboid mafia ring. And just one month ago he was declared citizen of the Millennium in his native metropolis. It's interesting to know that he had come into contact with space pirates. Now who could have been the leader of those space pirates? I'm gonna go with Captain Slag. Maybe it was Darkwater, but how are we so sure that he was still active? And what I mean by active is his head attached to his body. Alive, pretty much. But anyways, I really wasn't expecting a short comic series on Starshield. I mean, we only saw him in the intro in Deadlocked. When I stumbled upon this, I got surprised and kind of wondered, could we get more comics in the future? And honestly, guys, I'm yet to read the Ratchet and Clank comics. I still haven't read those. And if I do so, I might review them in the future. I'm not too sure. Sure, sure, the adventures of Captain Starshield, it's very short. It's a bunch of pictures, pretty much. But it's still some. Thing. And it's interesting, two planets got mentioned, a new galaxy got mentioned, the Kragmites, the Cantor. Do you guys think that these things could be explored in future sequels? Okay, I know what you're gonna say, it's 2005. It's a series from 2005. How can this information be new stuff? Well, we haven't heard of these things in any of the games. Sure, we heard about the Solana galaxy, but Planet Fractus, Colzon, Cantor, they're all pretty new to me. And if they decide to explore these in other games, future games, I'm down for it. Oh, and before I forget guys, all of the links will be in the description below. If you want to check out this short comic series, you can find it on the Wikia page. Other than that guys, leave all of your thoughts in the comment section below. I've been Vivi and thank you for watching.